Now, thank you for watching KTN News and welcome back. This is Planet Action. Today we are talking about World Water Week. We are discussing the issue to do with water, the scarce commodity, not only in Kenya, but across the world. And before we went on break, uh, Ambassador Martin was talking about the need of having water as an entry point to security. And I just want to take this to you, Valid. Now, he has mentioned that water does not need to be uh, a, a cause of alarm or insecurity in our societies. We need to look at it from the other side. Let it be the source of security and calmness wherever we are. How do we achieve that? Yeah, so I think even right from the beginning, some of the earliest water resource users associations were actually created because there was conflict. Around Mount Kenya, there was so much irrigation upstream that communities downstream were not getting any water. So the communities downstream came out with their weapons upstream. And what happened was the government at the time brought them onto a table. And that is when the idea of the Water Resource Users Association was being mooted by government. So they actually helped them form a Water Resource Users Association. And today, some of the strongest rulers are actually because they came to a table. So when it is during uh, times of drought, they negotiate that today there is, there, is, there is a dry season, so we will prioritize domestic water. For you irrigating, please reduce your irrigation. A similar example, which is slightly different, is in the city. Gatherine Rua, Water Resource Users Association, was actually created by um, Madunda na Madere of Matatus, <laughs> literally drivers and conductors of Matatus. And they came together because they were being arrested so much to have a collective voice. Then when they heard that uh, uh, the, the Honorable Michuki was rehabilitating the up, upstream rivers, they said, why don't we rehabilitate our river, Gatharaine River? So that has created a place where now they've created a riparian park mm -hmm. where they look after the river together. They're able to do income generating activities together. It has brought a lot of harmony within the community. So it goes beyond what unites us in many ways, culturally, spiritually. Our forest, the water forest, we have many people coming there for baptism, both traditional Odahura and also the Christian baptism. So the forest is actually, it's a source of the earthy springs and it brings people to, to a place of calmness. So it can be a very good way of bringing people together because there's a spiritual, cultural aesthetic to water that calms us all. What a government. Yes. Uh, two days ago, Nairobi experienced this massive uh, rain that we uh, usually not have on, on, on normal days. And we saw that the city was, was, was literally flooded. You know, expressway turned to be one big swimming pool. But that notwithstanding, here's a question where now we are asking ourselves, where has that water gone? Have we tapped that water? Have we stored that water? If not, that is a mistake that is happening. As the person who sits in the Climate Change Committee of the Council of Governors, what is your message to your fellow county bosses on the need to take care of this water that we have to store it for the sunny days? I think that's a very valid question and uh, it is true that when we receive water, when, you, when we receive rain, we have plenty of water. And what we have not done as a country and as a people is to have the culture of conserving that water for future use. Mm -hmm. We leave the water to flow to the rivers and then the eventually to Indian Ocean or Lake Victoria and then from Lake Victoria, for us who come from Western Kenya, it goes to River Nile, and when it goes River Nile, it goes all the way to Egypt, Egypt. and Egypt have built a swan dam, which they get all the water, and they use it to irrigate where there is total desert. And from there, they grow all the, all the uh, fruits and they export to, uh, to we, us. We end up so what we need as a country is to go back on the drawing board and be able to plan we have a major water master plan mm -hmm. where we need to see how to harness any drop of water we have. And I think the current government has come up 
uh, the master plan that is, is already been developed is showing how to put up various uh, mega dams and small dams across the, in all parts of the country so that we can be able to store this water, conserve it for future use. And as the ambassador said, as we uh, have these water, uh, water dams, we must also do uh, vegetation or reafforestation to ensure that the water is not lost. Mm -hmm. And finally, in our civil works engineering, we have not taken care of drainage. Mm -hmm. And that's why when it rained in Nairobi here, <laughs> everywhere was just, you know, flooded water. <laughs> drainage is a key area issue that we must and sometimes when I see this I wonder our engineers mm -hmm. is it true when these roads are being done actually are drawn and supervised by engineers because when I see on the boards they say road supervised by engineers so and so but when it rains the whole place is a, it's a mess I'll come to you Martin <laughs> now here's a question where um, for us to be able to store this water you alluded to the need to have afforestation um, have vegetation and that also brings another conversation all together which is carbon credits business that is now being addressed by everyone now when you come to Kenya now we know uh, the policy that is in place uh, with regard to carbon credits is there but people don't understand what this carbon credit business is all about. Therefore, how do we then get these conversations from high-level meetings, COP28, Africa Climate Summit, the governor's conferences, and take it down to the people who will grow this vegetation, who will plant and make sure these trees grow so that we take care of the moisture that we have and in return get to have enough water because it will rain? Well, um I'd love to answer that question and I will, but I, I first want to uh, respond a little bit to what uh, the governor said, because in the Netherlands, uh, the Netherlands is a country um, that is low, mm -hmm. um, and lower than the sea level. So there is always the threat. If the sea level rises, yeah. we are scared, so we build dikes, etc. The last major flood we had in the Netherlands was uh, some 70 years ago, in 1953, uh, uh, nearly 2,500 people died and then we had the Delta Works which is a, a plan for building dikes all over. Mm -hmm. But 50 years later we were confronted with another threat because we are also a Delta. Mm -hmm. So the main rivers from Europe, a number of rain rivers, they flow into the sea through the Netherlands. So we got water from, from the back. So we were protecting ourselves from the water from the sea but the water could not go and flow into the sea because the sea level was higher. Mm -hmm. So what to do there? And one of the things, and I think that's also true in, uh, in Kenya, was a new program. It was not the Delta Works, but was room for the water, room for the river. So what have we done in, 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 in a large part of the last century was to economize on water and to make sure that our rivers were straightened mm -hmm. so that barges could sail on the river and we could have transport uh, done, etc. But if you straighten the river, you make it shorter. And the amount of water flowing through that river can't get yeah. to the sea at certain mm -hmm. moment. So what we now do is we allow the rivers to meander again Meander. and uh, to recreate lakes. We had reclaimed water of land from the water and now we're giving back some land to the water because we need to, because of climate change and, and, and different experience. So that's one example that we use. And you can only do that, giving land back to the water, if those users of the land agree to that. Mm -hmm. So that's the conflict model again. And you can only solve that by sitting around the table mm -hmm. and find a solution. Mm -hmm. Now coming back to your carbon credit, because that's also a very important issue. Uh, yes, um, if we are, would be able also here in Kenya to make better use of water reserves and make sure that on the surface there's more vegetation, then what we can also do is uh, have better production at lower uh, CO2, CO2 emission. Uh, and the less CO2 emission you would have, you save on that, you can sell those, those savings, you can put a price to it and sell it to places where there is a lot of CO2 emission higher than the norms that have been set. 
So you get a price for the CO2 and you get a market for those rights. And the money coming back from selling your uh, carbon rights, carbon emission rights, you can use for replanting, reforestation, um, uh, uh, river trimming, um, also um, getting the riparian um, 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 uh, coast to the river um, uh, being well um, uh, developed. So there is a financial mechanism. That's what the carbon rights are. It's a financial mechanism to make sure that when you pollute less and you sell those rights to those areas where there's more pollution. There is an ethical problem with that. Mm -hmm. And that is that you would allow people to Continue. overstep <laughs> their norms. That's an yes. ethical problem. Yeah, that's the problem. And so I don't think that there is a, a sustainable solution, but it could be a temporary solution. And it could also help those countries which have a lot of carbon rights to sell, to get an income from that, to uh, invest in those um, carbon emission uh, right reduction um, to um, uh, expand on, uh, on, on industry and in uh, agriculture, which are sectors that produce a lot of uh, carbon emissions. So it's, I think it's a temporary solution. Uh, it's, a, a, it's a market mechanism. Um, but in the end, the plight that we need, live, need to live up to all is to reduce on our carbon emission everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Valid. Mm -hmm. Nairobi, uh, President William Bruto the other day formed the Nairobi Rivers Commission, which is in charge of making sure that the rivers that we have in Nairobi are clean out of pollution and all that. Now here's a question, this is a subject that goes to show that we who have been allowed to be close to these rivers have not taken care of these rivers. We've polluted these rivers upstream that by the time it's getting to someone down at Tana River, that water they cannot consume. Therefore, what is your message to Kenyans with regard to taking care of our resources that we have because we all depend on it? My, my message is very simple. I ask everybody I meet these days, do you know where you get your drinking water? Do you know where it comes from? And then I also ask them, do you know where your waste goes? When you flush the toilet, do you know where your waste goes? The reason I ask this question is because where you get your water, the source of that water, there could be inequities. Like Roiro Dam provides 4% of the water to Nairobi city. But the communities living right next to the dam cannot get water with a jerry can because the Nairobi city water and sewerage company comes with speed boats and chases them away. Something we witnessed when we went with the Kiambu MCAs. So what is happening is because of our inequities and because of we as Kenyans not taking responsibility for our water situation, both in terms of the way we dump our waste and the way we don't harvest water, what is happening is that private companies are seeing those as opportunities, mm -hmm. business opportunities, to come and exploit us further. Mm -hmm. They will steal more water upstream and bring it into the city because the city people who can't be bothered to harvest their rainwater have money to pay. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to ask ourselves, are you a member of the Water Resource mm -hmm. Users mm -hmm. Association in your area mm -hmm. where you live? Mm -hmm. Are you a member of the Community Forest Association? in the area where you live, where there is a forest, like the, the ambassador is talking about rehabilitating this forest. I'm a member of the Rot of CFA, Community Forestry Association, and most of the members are old ladies in their 80s and 90s. They are the ones doing the hard work of rehabilitating our forests mm -hmm. for nothing. Mm -hmm. Also the youth, mm -hmm. we are dumping the job of rehabilitating our forest on the youth. We have a youth group which is the, the, the water forest family, it's being led by a person who's visually in, in, impaired, but he mobilizes the youth to plant trees, and the big NGOs, when they come there, they just use it as a photo opportunity, then we are left with the job of looking after the trees. There you go, the governor. Now, uh, briefly, what is the way forward in two minutes, sir? The way forward is as follows. First, as Kenyan, we must take responsibility. We must agree that water is life, and without water, there is no life. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we must take responsibility 
and ensure that we conserve, first of all, our water uh, sources, whether they are water springs or whether they are water catchment areas, we must conserve and we must find, work together the way the, our, the ambassador has said, mm -hmm. uh, come together and work together and ensure that this resource is utilized effectively and sustainably. Mm -hmm. Martin. As they all uh, seek solutions towards this, what is the contribution of the international partners in making sure that Kenya gets to enjoy, uh, first of all, policies and implementation, as well as assistance in making sure that these policies get to work, that we can learn from you and move forward as one big happy family? <laughs> yeah, I really hope so. Um, let me first say that uh, the development partners, and not only the development partners, but often with the government, have a very good uh, dialogue on, uh, on water. There is a, a, a group, a coordination group, uh, that meets very regularly to discuss all these different aspects uh, around water. Uh, and there is a lot of common ground there. Um, so I think um, uh, in terms of the spirit of uh, discussing issues that need to be resolved, I think uh, this, the basic structure is there. But it's not enough. Um, I think what is essential is to look at water as a unifying force. Mm -hmm. What is also essential is to understand that the climate change is changing the whole uh, policy setting around water. Uh, so we need to be flexible also in finding uh, these solutions. Um, it is very, very important, I think, to have that effective coordination. And what are we doing? Well, um, we started, I think, um, uh, this evening with um, uh, the Flocka program, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of those programs that brings a structure into the water sector. A structure in terms of uh, clear policies, in terms of a legal framework, but also in terms of a financial arrangement. Mm -hmm. So that is something we can do. We can lobby and advocate on the importance. We can bring different interest groups together. And we do a number of uh, projects and, uh, and, and programs also. Mm -hmm. um, we are working, for instance, uh, right from the water source, the water catchment area, to the tap, mm -hmm. which is the catchment to tap uh, uh, program done by um, uh, WWF uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in Kenya with a conglomerate of, uh, mm -hmm. of local partners, really many local partners. Um, it's just one example, but it is an example in which the integrated water resource management mm -hmm. philosophy it comes out most clearly. Um, but there are other programs um, uh, as well on, on water supply, on sanitation. Um, we are uh, also ourselves financing on uh, innovative financing uh, facilities, uh, trying to uh, build um, a bankable projects mm -hmm. around water, which is possible. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that is very, very important is how to finance all these activities. Mm -hmm. Flocka is a credit for that, but at the same time, water also has a price and it can never be free for everyone yes indeed and that is the wild water week conversation right here on planet action only on ktn news with me ambassador martin Brower, the embassy of kingdom of netherlands in kenya ambassador uh, his excellency dr wilba otichilo governor of higa county and Violet Matiru, co-founder, Millennium Community Development Initiatives Foundation, as we have this discussion on the need of having water as the source of peace, making sure that we take care of our resources and the governor saying that we all must come to the table and have this conversation. KTN News Planet Action giving you that opportunity to have your voice heard. My name is Dennis Aseto. Eric Latif is coming up next with Newsline at the top of the hour on KTN Prime News. Enjoy the rest of your view. Good night and as always, keep your city green.